everyone welcome to the channel this is james and in this video let's go over the finale episode six of the ones who live spoiler alert if you're not caught up it looks like bill was right about one thing don't let any a's in right sometimes you got to burn it down i did a first reaction video earlier you can check that out my reaction was i enjoyed episode six was it kind of cheesy yeah and some unbelievable stuff happens i'll point some of that out for sure but the reunion many fans hoped for happened. Rick and Michonne defeated Major General Bill and the evil within the CRM. That happened. The CR Council took over. Now the city has free movement and oversight over the military. So it, it all worked out. It was a happy ending. It was rushed. There was a lot of unbelievable moments. And if you take a step back, I can see... I mean, I like the episode, but... With the other video, my first reaction video, there's a lot of mixed comments in there. A lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people, um, like myself, were kind of mixed a little bit. And I can understand. I can totally step back and look at the six-episode series and see it's rushed. The writing wasn't over the top. And every one of us would have written it a little bit differently. So there's that. We all have our own opinions. And it could have went so many different ways, right? Well, Rick and Michonne, they made it out alive. I mean, I love that part, not only for fans, but for me the, and the channel. You know, it's like, woo, -woo the story continues in the channel for a little longer. Can we all just be like RJ and just believe? And I want to say a couple things. The timeline is just totally screwed. Either you look at it one way and it totally doesn't work. You look at it in another way, it totally doesn't work. It's like... Yeah, this doesn't make any sense at all. And that's one of the most screwed up things because as a fan, I mean, I know it's a zombie show, but get the timeline right. That's a big thing. That's a big thing for fans and it screws with your head. And one other question is, why did all the frontliners wear their full uniform all the time in the building, sitting around in the chairs, in the projector room? They were all sitting there. Everybody still had their mask on. So Rick and Michonne infiltrate the summit maybe not the best word to use they go back to the summit michonne goes to jadis's apartment rick goes to the echelon briefing in jadis's apartment she still did art you see some familiar faces on the wall interesting stuff and wouldn't you know it the damning letter was in the cat's butt of course it was we see several gabriel paintings and bill paintings this is uh, probably saying that she was still conflicted by her two loves Gabe and the artist life and Bill and the soldier life. It was just Michonne's rage, I think, that made her rip it up because there's definitely better ways to dispose of it. Um, the letter did spell out everything Jada said it did. She was not lying about it. And I wonder if this painting uh, represents the last light of the world. I don't know. It's hard to see it clearly. Um, you know, I don't even know what it is. Could it be Alexandria, the city of Alexandria, like in Egypt? And the light tower that was supposed to be there. Last light of the world. I don't know. And I totally wonder what that is. You know, Bill saying we're the dead ones there at the fence. That mirrors what Rick said in the main show. Um, but Rick has moved past that. And Bill is just stuck on it. It's a little crazy to know 2,533 people before Rick thought Bill might be correct. And that his plan was the best plan. As far as the echelon briefing. But Thorne said when she brought Rick to the fence there to meet Bill and knew he was about to get the echelon briefing, she said, this is it. This is the moment. And Thorne wasn't really saying this is the moment you need to rebel. She was meaning this is the moment, the echelon briefing. But it kind of was Rick's moment that Okafor was talking about. We do learn some stuff in the briefing. I mean, kind of. We knew much of it already. I know many of you were wanting more to it, like a cure or whatever, but... We learn what happened to Pittsburgh. Wasn't that where they found princes? Um, Operation N1W, as it was called. Um, Michonne got to see the sensitive aspects part, the child evac protocol. And, you know, she found that bunny in the floor there. They were wheeling full carts of stuffed animals and stuff, comfort items for the kids to help with the trauma they were about to suffer. So in the echelon briefing, Bill asked, what's the worst thing you've done? He's like, I bit somebody's throat out with my teeth to save my son. That was pretty cool. And you could tell Rick almost everything uh, Major General Bill was saying. Rick was like, this dude's crazy. But there were some important little pieces, especially the embeds. 
throughout the country, throughout the world, monitor them, potentially sabotage them, influence their politics and approaches, that could possibly be some long-term problems uh, that could pop up anywhere around the world, you know, at any time. So at least that inclusion added a lot of potential possibilities uh, somewhere in other stories. He talks about doing away with the council, keeping the CRs secret and, and captives, not letting them leave. He says, we will destroy all the communities and take their resources pretty much. And it shows Alexandria and that oil well, that's fear, fear the walking dead. But Rick, he was ready, man. He's getting his knife out the whole time. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I just can't accept this. You know, even Bill saying, Rick, you could be the next leader in a decade or so, a couple decades, you could be running the CRM. We got flashbacks to Dave, uh, Negan, all kinds of people, all kinds of ways. You know, they did the flashbacks all through this episode and they have this season a bunch of times. And, you know, on the whole idea of, hey, you can watch this season, uh, The Ones Who Live, and it's its own thing. You don't have to have seen the rest of the shows and stuff. It'll make sense. And, you know, I don't really buy that. Not now that the show's over. And they've used so many montages to tell part of the story. I mean, if you don't know who these people were that they're doing the flashbacks to and what that means, you're missing out on a big part of the show. But Major General Bill realized just a moment too late Rick is not a B. Rick is not the kind of guy that you want to bring into this. Rick's the kind of guy that will say, who are you to make that decision for the world? I mean, there's a lot of things you can look past. I know that they're all Bs. They're frontliners. Why would they think something's going to happen from within? You know, they have a perimeter. It showed that when Michonne was sneaking in, they had people watching the perimeter, but not what's going on on the inside. But they had grenades and weapons and everything just everything at their disposal they needed to make it happen. And there were some things, you know, like Rick coming down on the elevator and right there's Michonne. Um, he did fight that one guy, though. That was pretty brutal. He put Bill in the crate. Michonne, of course, had seen the thing about the kids. So, And part of the cheesiness is just the, we have to destroy the place. You know, we have to, uh, because we can, you know, and, and just some words like that and toward the end you know the stuff about love doesn't die and all that kind of stuff so thorn goes to the fence and sees major general bill isn't there rick had lied to her on the radio when he called her he, she goes to his apartment she sees the hand laying there uh, you see the damage done by the sword when bill uh, cracks down on it and i wonder why he left it behind and i understand a lot of people saying that it's a, a symbol i'm leaving crm behind and i'm letting thorn know hey you know, you have a moment to think about this. And instead of changing her mind, of course, she goes after Rick and Michonne. And there's that moment that she realizes that Michonne is that person Rick had been trying to escape to get to, you know, all this time. But Rick and Michonne, they take the frags, they wire up the gas canisters. They're going to blow it all up. They're going to try to sneak away. They're using the soldier Rick killed in the elevator and Major General Bill to be the, um, quote, quote, uh, detonators, the way they pull the keys on all the grenades, that's a cool thing. But then they're stopped by Thorn, and that's a bad thing. But they've run out of time, and the stuff's about to explode, and they're right there at it. And when you see the explosion, it's like, yeah, you know, they survived that. Yeah, I don't know. But, hey, you just got to go with some things. Michonne cuts the water tank, lets water fall on them. Um, I think that's a flag, maybe. Maybe it's a tarp. Maybe it's a flag that they pull over them. But then the whole place is gassed. You know, someone said in World Beyond that they said that the gas would uh, make you reanimate faster. But the whole point of World Beyond was trying to get people to not reanimate as fast or to stop reanimation altogether. And they added that stuff into the chlorine gas to experiment on Omaha and Campus Colony. So maybe it was said that chlorine gas alone causes people to reanimate pretty much right after they die. But that's what happened here. Everybody pretty much reanimated immediately. But then Thorne shows up with a mask. Rick did throw that bag kind of just toward her, kind of right there. So she did have a second or two at least to, to grab the mask. She didn't know a mask was probably in the bag in the first place, so that's questionable. But they fight for a minute. Rick gets overwhelmed by walkers and pretty much like totally overwhelmed by walkers, pushed into a corner. So then Michonne and Thorne start fighting. And there's a lot of questions asked, but eventually, you know, in a dead world, love is dead. And Michonne says love doesn't die. 
She says that a couple times, I think, in the fight. But eventually she stabs Thorn, takes her down. But the thing about Rick, he's over there, got a bunch of walkers on him. He pulls one of the grenades out of one of them. And then he just cowers down like, okay, maybe it won't hurt me. And it explodes right there at him. I mean, I don't know, man. That's, you know, the big explosion is one thing. A grenade exploding, pretty much destroying all the walkers except Rick. Rick is just perfectly fine. That's okay, whatever. He's still alive. Hey, we still got Rick. And I think I misheard Thorn in the one part. I said it was kind of cheesy or the cheesiest part where she said, Okafor was right. You just better hope Bill was wrong. And I guess she's right about that. It's like, you know, yeah, Okafor was right. And I think about that too. And I think a lot of people think about it when Major General Bill said, you've got 14 years, dude, to figure something else out because I had my plan and you didn't seem to like it. You killed me. You got 14 years to see if you can do any better. So yeah, I guess you just better hope Bill was wrong. That is true. And in the end, Rick and Michonne, just two people, two A's, infiltrate a base full of B's and they take it down. Is that a little unbelievable? Yes. A lot of the stuff was. But like I say, we just got to go with some stuff. It was rushed. It was very rushed. But after that, of course, we have the reunion so many people wanted. We got it. uh, You know, it wasn't inside the walls of Commonwealth, which, you know, I thought at least the big wall, you know, maybe they would see the big wall where Judith and RJ were at at the very last scene of season 11. But they're just kind of out in the middle of a field. I think they definitely should have added a little more to the budget to make it where you could see Commonwealth in the background, at least through the trees or something. But that's okay. You know, I can go with this. I understand it. It's cool. You would think RJ may be also saying like, holy crap, that's an awesome helicopter. Like, I've never seen a helicopter. You know, Judith, I've I've never seen a helicopter. Can we go for a ride? But definitely the shots of Rick and Judith hugging and stuff, you know, um, the Rick would say, you know, that's everything. He gets Michonne, he gets Judith, he gets RJ, he lives, they're back home, reunited, CRM, the bad element is defeated, and all is good in the world. And that's just the story of The Walking Dead, the story of the fans... The comments are really split, so we'll have to see how it plays out in the next few days and and the future, really, because a lot of people have already stated the show was kind of lame. I didn't like it. Yes, the reunion was great. It's cool they got back together. It seemed like a fitting ending to the whole story, the whole franchise for me. I'm out of here. And that's okay. I understand. A lot of people said that. A lot of people may stop watching, but the Walking Dead universe definitely continues. But I know I'll probably be doing another video on the Echelon briefing itself, just trying to detail out some of that. And there definitely was a whole lot of details, a lot of the flashbacks showing people the reasons why, a lot of deeper meanings and stuff that I didn't go into. But hey, we can definitely go into them down in the comments below, and I hope you join me there. This is James in Nashville, and as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more dead stuff.